What if I told you he wasn't the greatest? That a country would fail to protect its greatest natural resource. That sometimes it is a matter of life and death. That no one can outrun the truth. What if I told you he's the only true Cubs fan? That you could heal all wounds with a fight song. That the man no one could stop tragically was. What if I told you running a marathon is easy? 30 stories, 30 filmmakers, 30 years. ESPN's critically acclaimed 30 for 30. The federal government is alleging that a Louisville assistant uh, requested a payment from an Adidas representative to provide to a Louisville recruit. It was alleged to be $100,000. Did you know anything about that? The FBI says that there was a payment involving two former Adidas employees. We are embarrassed about what went on, and we're extremely contrite what went on. But that doesn't, one person does not determine the worth of what we're all about as a program. Well, welcome back. It's been quite an hour, the end of an era, the Coach Denny Crum story, so to speak. It has been a wonderful story here at the University of Louisville the last 30 years. It certainly has been. We've talked to family members, former players, former coaches, friends. Everybody has something wonderful to say about Denny Crum. And he will be missed. The basketball community as a whole will... Uh, uh, we'll, we'll miss him. This is a national story. Denny Crum, a lot of people used to refer to the University of Denny Crum. The University of Louisville has always been a blue blood in the college basketball landscape, and this is mostly due to head coach Denny Crum overseeing the program from 1971 until 2001. While he was head coach at UofL, he coached the Cardinals to two national championships and six Final Fours. Outstanding homegrown senior, and Wooden Award winner Daryl Griffith led the Cards to the first national championship in 1980. Louisville sticks to its game. When you're hot, you're hot. And Dr. Duncanstein was sizzling. Daryl was in fact sizzling. He went on to win the Final Four Most Outstanding Player, and while doing this, he and his teammates played as a cohesive unit, outplaying powerhouse UCLA for Denny Crum in the Cards' first title. Very close together, on and off the floor. And uh, I don't really know any reason for it other than the fact that they just really cared about each other. Jerry hit those two free throws and the realization uh, that, hey, uh, we're going to win this thing. Uh, when that hit me, uh, it was just an unbelievable uh, uh, feeling of relief. Uh, uh, I can't say I was overjoyed because I think the pressure was so great that, that uh, the feeling of relief that, hey, can you believe it? We are finally uh, going to win one of these things. And so they did. Denny Crum and his Louisville Cardinals basketball team cemented a legacy that has lasted a lifetime. But soon after, they reached another championship against the Duke Blue Devils in 1986. To view the gleaming skyline of Dallas, Texas, is to conjure up thoughts of oil fields, J.R. Ewing, and South Fork. But this weekend, it is basketball that captures the city's attention. And in a state where football tickets are often as valuable as land, a seated sold-out reunion arena is the toughest ticket in Texas history. This team was very similar to our team in 1980. We were senior guard dominated. Like We had Daryl Griffith and Tony Branch and uh, senior guards this year. We had Milt Wagner and Jeff Hall. Uh, we also had another very unique situation. We had a freshman center named Purvis Ellison. Louisville Cardinals went to Dallas, Texas for the 1986 Final Four and won hard-fought games against the LSU Tigers and Duke Blue Devils. This time around, Denny Crum knew what it took to win a championship because of his win in 1980. His team was led by senior Milt Wagner and feature number one overall NBA draft pick, Nervous Purvis Ellison. This trip to the Final Four would sadly be Denny Crum's last. I've made the decision to, uh, to retire. Coach Patino is who I really want to focus in on. I want to go down and spend as much time as I possibly can. The Denny Crum era ended in 2001, and athletic director Tom Drurich ushered in a new era 
that would headline victory and corruption with head coach Rick Pitino. It didn't take long for Coach Pitino to get his Louisville Cardinals to the Final Four. Meet me in St. Louis seemed to be a fitting phrase during the 2005 NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament. St. Louis, Missouri, the final destination on the 2005 road to the Final Four and the magnificent Gateway Arch overlooking the Mississippi River proved to be the perfect gateway to a national championship. Many young Cardinals fans' first memories are of the 2005 Louisville Cardinals basketball team. Led by the likes of Francisco Garcia and Taquan Dean, Rick Pitino had his first shot at a national championship with the university. A road to the championship seeing the Washington Huskies and gritty Illinois fighting Illini, the Cardinals were unable to bring home the first championship since the Denny Crum era, losing in the Final Four. This gave hope for Cardinals fans, however, like Ethan Sprouse, the director of social media for the Villains student section, who always dreamed of watching Louisville win a championship. In the driveway, you know, pretending that I was like, you know, T-Will or, or Francisco Garcia and pretending that Louisville was winning the championship. To the enjoyment of Ethan and other young Cardinal fans, the years following the 2005 Final Four were great for the Louisville Cardinals program. Rick Bettino was starting to lock down great recruiting classes that included players like Kyle Courage, Edgar Sosa, and Terrence Williams. What Ethan didn't know, however, is that we would be back to the Final Four sooner rather than later. The 2012 Final Four saw the cards come up against our biggest rivals, the University of Kentucky Wildcats. The 2011-2012 Louisville Cardinals basketball team fought the eventual national champion Kentucky Wildcats in the Final Four semifinal. What was a very disappointing loss for the Cardinals Rick Bettino knew that the team had a real shot of coming back the next year and winning it all with standout guard duo in Russ Smith and Peyton Siva. Fans were excited to redeem this loss and finally own the state of Kentucky. After a very successful regular season going 26-5, the 2012-2013 Louisville Cardinals were ready to go into the postseason with a chip on their shoulder from last year's Final Four defeat. The Cardinals managed a very doubtful comeback against the Syracuse Orange in the last year of the conference. You told me about the importance of this floor, this building. What does it mean to you to win this Big East tournament? You know, Dave Gavitt was a good friend of mine, a dear friend, and in his memory, this whole Big East was formed, so for us to go out as champions back-to-back -back like this, real special. If you're on the selection committee Sunday night, who gets that number one overall seed? I think we will, because of strength of schedule, but if we don't, that's okay. The Cardinals came into the tournament as the number one overall seed. Touted by many as the best team in the country and the presumptive national champion, the road was easy until the Cards played Duke in the regional final. Tragedy struck. Outstanding sixth man Kevin Ware went down with one of the most gruesome injuries that the tournament has ever seen. He inspired the team to go back at Duke and make it to the championship. Win it for Ware stuck. Play Pat, what up? My heart thumb, not from being nervous sometimes. I'm thinking God made me special here on purpose. So all the while till I'm gone, make my words important. So if I slip away, if I die today, the last thing you remember won't be about some Due to great performances from Tim Henderson and Luke Hancock, the cards were able to survive against the Wichita State Shockers, advancing to the championship game. Welcome back, friends, to championship night in Atlanta, Georgia. In the championship game, the Cardinals were down most of the first half, but a string of threes from Luke Hancock reignited the Cardinals' offense going into halftime. The Cards managed to get in front of the Michigan Wolverines in the second half and secured the school's third national title and first since the Denny Crum era in 1986. For Rick Bettino, he became the first head coach to ever win a national championship at two different schools, showing why he was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame. The Cards followed their motto and won it for wear, 
but sadly after a few years the program would be put in question. The author of a book claiming a former Louisville basketball staffer paid escorts to dance for and have sex with players and recruits appeared on national television today. The recruit would pick out what girl he wanted. Andre would come to me, tell me what girl the recruit wanted, and I would tell the girl, and she would say her price. I would tell him. He would say, okay, um, give me the money. I pretty much would sometimes hand it to them, sometimes he'd give it to them, and um, I just remember checking Twitter, and uh, I see that you know this book is coming out with a lot of allegations against Louisville basketball, and um, I always I thought you know like nothing, there's no way it's true, like nothing like that could ever would ever happen in Louisville. In 2015, news broke of a scandal involving the University of Louisville basketball team from 2010 until 2014. Escort Katina Powell released a book that gave details of dormitory parties that she and her daughters would get paid to attend. While it is believed that Rick Pitino had no involvement, the scandal was associated with assistant coach Andre McGee. The program still suffered. Did one person do some scurrilous things? I believe so. What I know now, I believe so. The only thing I don't know is I don't know why he did it. We last heard from McGee in October when he resigned as an assistant coach at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. The former Cardinals director of basketball operations, McGee was accused of bankrolling nearly two dozen parties inside Minardi Hall on the University of Louisville campus. Parties where strippers and prostitutes were used to lure recruits. The college basketball world was in awe. Just recently coming off of a national championship, many people, including the members, asked what would happen to the program. This week is will Rick Pitino remain the head coach of the University of Louisville? And I think he does. Right now, after the book that came out last week, the allegations right now are stronger than a lot of the evidence that's coming out, and none of it is linking to Rick Pitino. Rick Pitino did, in fact, keep his job as head coach. But what came next was a travesty to the team and the fans. Good evening. A stunning announcement out of Louisville today. The University of Louisville men's basketball team will not play in this year's NCAA tournament. UofL will be implementing a self-imposed postseason ban on the team this year. You know, it's never easy for the people that don't deserve it. It happens all the time. This is not a team that wasn't going to make the tournament. This is a team that is very much favored to go very far in the tournament. Um, so this penalty is, is quite substantial, much more. Uh, it, it comes with complete shock to me. Devastated. So. Um, you know, for us to come from where we came from, uh, you know, put ourselves in this position, uh, I mean, be the number two seed right now in the ACC, and put ourselves in, in this position to play in the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, we, you know, once we heard the news, uh, you know, we were truthfully devastated. Um, and I mean, really just heartbroken and, uh, you know, thankful, you know, we have these guys behind us that are here and, you know, can pick us up. The decision to self-impose a postseason ban was incredibly disappointing for the Cardinals and their fans. The cards were off to a hot start with grad transfers Trey Lewis and Damian Lee, both of which had aspirations to play in the tournament but never got the chance. The scandal placed a huge blemish on the program, especially after winning the championship only a few years prior. I respect the hell out of Rick Pitino and what he has accomplished. As a basketball As coach. As a basketball yeah. coach. Okay. But big time coaches at big time programs don't get away. Soon enough, Rick Pitino would be unable to run away from the corruption that had cursed the University of Louisville basketball team. Right before the start of the 2017-2018 school year, another scandal broke, making and erasing history within the program. Well, there are new allegations against former Louisville coach Rick Pitino in the ongoing college basketball corruption and bribery scandal. A federal indictment released Wednesday suggests that Pitino was fully aware of a scheme to pay Cardinals recruit Brian Bowen and even participated in the plan. A handful of assistant coaches and an Adidas executive were named in the indictment. One of the allegations at the center of the investigation is player 10 
who sources tell ESPN is Brian Bowen, a five-star guard forward who signed with Louisville in June. The FBI alleges there was a $100,000 payment from Adidas to the family of player 10 to ensure he signed with the school, which happened days later. What did you know about this? I didn't know anything, anything at all. The same way the whole media found out is the same way I found out. Effective immediately, Coach Patino has been placed on an unpaid administrative leave. Due to the lack of institutional control, Rick Patino was fired for this pay-for-play scandal, ending his term after 16 years with the team. This also saw athletic director Tom Jurich fired. While investigation is still ongoing for the bribery scandal, the NCAA came down with punishment for the first scandal, stripping the 2013 national title. Murmurings of the death penalty for the program were becoming louder. I just saw the, the tweet come out and just devastating moment, obviously, but, you know, I, I, I know what happened. You know, I, I, I remember watching uh, that game with my dad, with my family, um, and the NCAA can't take that away, you know, um, those memories. Um, and, and I don't really, I don't really care what anyone says. Those, those guys on that team were good guys. They worked hard. They earned those wins, um, fair and square. So um. that's really all that Louisville fans have left: memories of a fantastic basketball team that beat the odds and won it for Kevin Ware. All Louisville fans can do now is look to the future, which is looking extremely bright. Up to Kenny, he said, "You know, Coach, that win matters to so many people." 